it's hard to predict exactly which model and which configuration is going to actually work out on the I shouldn't say on the ground it should be on the in the air <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Satya Chakravarti. I'm professor of aerospace engineering. I'm Siddharth Kiran. I study in fourth standard and I am nine years old. I'm actually trying to make these flying taxis. What do you think about it? I understand that it's going to be flying and you can just book it. It'll come and pick you up and drop you wherever you want. Will it look like a plane? Do you know how a plane looks like? Yeah, it has two wings. Okay. And it has a back thing that helps it turn. Oh, nice. Okay. And it flies. So, do we need to have any of those kinds of things for a flying taxi? I think so. So, how big would it get? Since it's a taxi, it would be little bigger than a taxi. Right. And where, where do you think it'll land? I think it'll either land on the road or on the roof. Why do you need wings for a plane? The wind helps. Like the wind helps the wings to make the aeroplane fly. That's correct. So you want to have the wind flow over the wing and the wing then sort of produces what's called the lift. Only thing is the plane needs to keep on moving whereas in the helicopter it can actually stay up in one place. Do you want these things to be electric or do you think they will actually be running out of uh, petrol? I want it to be electric because then there won't be any pollution. So the question is how soon do you think we want to be charging this plane, stopping the plane and charging it. I think if, if you're telling me to say it in trips, every trip. How long do you think you want to be flying? Um, uh, one hour. One hour, that's fair. I mean, that's, that's, so you want to charge for five minutes and you want to be flying for one hour. Yeah, that's how cars work. But today, you probably need to actually charge for 15 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes but it can do about 200 kilometers that will take you outside Chennai all right you can probably do about three to four trips in an hour and you can probably do about 10 trips before you charge so you can you can fly for about two and a half hours then I would definitely use this not a car thank you <laughs> I'm Maitrey in M8 standards how you heard of flying taxis just recently but I was wondering like why do you feel the need for flying taxis Okay, I, won't, I would actually flip the question to you. Why, why would you think anybody will think about flying taxis? To beat traffic and okay. decrease the time taken to go to places. So, how fast do you think these, these taxis should go? Because it would be a taxi and someone would be riding it. I'd assume it to go about the same speed as a car once it was in the air. About 30 kilometers per hour. Then yeah. what advantage do you have in going faster? I think because cars, even though they can go 30, 40 kilometers an hour, because of the traffic, it always gets like the speed is much slower. Faster the speed that I'm going to target, the longer the distance yeah. it, it takes for me to even accelerate and decelerate. Yeah. So it makes sense for me to target a lower speed at which I want to fly yeah. if I want to do a shorter distance. Yeah. And if you want to be flying slow, um, it's very hard for you to use wings yeah. because you need to have very large wings right? for flying slow and then get that small differential yeah. pressure. You need to be able to use that over a huge to spread it out. Right? So what is the problem in actually having very large wings then? Um, no large wings, maybe it would take up a lot of space and right. if taxis, if like flying taxis went mainstream, then there would be even more like air traffic. Yeah. First of all, you need to be having very compact wings. Yes. Yeah. And the next thing that you want is you also want it to fly slow. Yeah. And that's sort of counterintuitive for a plane. So well, here we want to actually try to get the best of both worlds which is like it has to be compact and it also has to be slow flying. Mm. So what do you think we should be doing in order to counter this? The fans could turn so then they could produce Wow, more. okay, so that's a, that, that's a good idea. So there are a lot of people who actually think about the fans turning. So yeah. if the fans were to turn, then you don't need those turbines anyway, right? So the, tur the fans yeah. could actually essentially do the job of the, of the turbines uh -huh. also, right? Yeah, so that's one of these uh, concepts that they have, what's called the tilt rotor. Mm -hmm. 
So what do you think is the future for flying taxis? When do you think that's going to happen? I think maybe the first ones could start flying maybe in five years. Or... Five years. Okay. So what, the, what do you think it's going to take for us to get there in five years from where we are? Um, I think there need to be more test flights done. Uh-huh. Okay. And maybe in less dense locations. So mm -hmm. like it, there can always be changes made and... For people to like test them out, then they need to have the right like, qualifications to do. Wow! Can I hire you? <laughs> you? Seem to be saying the right things. So, uh, from what you're saying, in about five years, the testing could be done, and after that, the, the luxury segment would start yeah. using it tentatively. But another five years, all the luxury people would have started flying, yeah. and another ten years it becomes accessible to more people and in 20 years it becomes commonplace. So 20 years from now when it's accessible to everybody, um, are we going to actually see traffic in the sky rather than traffic on the roads? Um, so I was actually wondering how that would be done. We expect that we will have what is called as autonomous ATCs. Mm -hmm. This virtual system will essentially be what you call an invisible machine that's there everywhere mm -hmm. and you can access this online and you essentially get an autonomous authorization for your flight path to take. So, um, you mentioned that there would be taxis going in the up-down direction so they don't like bang into each other. Um, how high would they like go? Like, the So, you now have a corridor above the drones and below where the, the current planes fly. Mm -hmm. So, that's within about, let's say, one and a half kilometers. Oh. So, somewhere between approximately 500 meters to 1500 meters is a yeah. Is, is a corridor that's being thought of for these uh, taxis. I'm Naimisha and I'm doing my third year B.Tech in aerospace engineering at IIT Madras. So what do you think about flying cars and uh, do you have any questions or, or yeah. can you actually tell me how to make flying cars otherwise? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, so I think that they are amazing. That's that, that's going to be a disruptive technology in the coming years, mm. first thing. And uh, they're going to be time saving. Few problems may come up, but yeah, as time prolongs, uh, people might switch to it. That's what I feel. What do you think of the uh, showstoppers. I mean, what what's going to be the barrier to getting this off the ground? I think the cost would be one barrier, uh, or people who get you know sick while traveling about because yeah, sickness, yeah, okay. sickness mm -hmm. and uh, then what uh, about the you know landing place taking off? Sickness. What do you think? What do you think we should do? I don't. I, I don't think we we should have a lot of space. It should just take off vertically. Take off vertic yeah. vertically and uh, land vertically. Yes. Right? So. What kind of a plane would that be? Is it going to be like a helicopter or technologically what do you think would the plane look like? I think it should have some wings which can twist or turn according to the, so when it wants to glide, it has to, the wings will have to turn. Okay, and when it doesn't have to glide, what would what would the wings have to do? They just, okay. It's, it's, the, wings it's, will, it's, the wings will remain wings, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so they don't really twist then. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Then, so, then, and, and then, how do you do vertical takeoff in that? Yeah, something uh, that I need to think about. So, does this give a clue? Oh yeah, <laughs> does, I can notice this. So, the fans they help in the vertical takeoff, and then these steel wings they help in the gliding portion. Right. Hmm. So, the question then is, uh, after doing the job of vertical takeoff. Uh -huh. Right, these fans will, will have, have to remain to... as they are, uh, or what, yeah, do, uh, what do you think? I, they... I feel that uh, maybe two, two of them can switch down, and the other two can stay. Or, or why would can... you? Why would you just have only two of them turn? Uh, why not all I... of them? Oh yeah, maybe all of them. But uh... in, in fact, the two of them is actually the right answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
when you're going forward, right, mm -hmm. um, you are actually facing only the wind resistance. That, that is what they call the aerodynamic drag, uh -huh. mm -hmm. right? Whereas when you had to take off, you were trying to balance the entire weight of the aircraft. So you don't need that much power from these vertical rotors uh, okay. to overcome drag as much as they were required for uh, balancing the weight. So it's sufficient for you to actually tilt only two of them, two of them. right? But is there any harm in tilting four of them? Um, there is no harm. There is no harm. There is okay. no harm. But there is a harm in tilting any of them, because <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because <laughs> so because you may have a failure mode there. So what if it actually gets stuck? The, mm -hmm. the tilting gets stuck mm -hmm. because some dust got in. So any moving parts are always like a big no. I am Pavel Pavel Vijay Gorkar from Department of Engineering Design, IIT Madras. I had my undergraduate here in the same department, so I got my B Tech in engineering design, I am taking automotive engineering and now I am pursuing my PhD as a PMRF fellow in the same department. What What are your thoughts about flying taxis? Uh, so in my opinion, uh, the control systems will be very different. So you need to have two different sets of core people working on the same project or same product essentially and uh, to ensure that it remains stable as a vehicle in the air it should be able to also safely come down if in case yeah. something goes wrong. So it's a significantly challenging safety problem hmm. along with uh, really fascinating dynamics. Do you think it's just going to be like a car that flies with wings or a car that flies with rotors? What are the similarities and differences from a car that a, a flying taxi would be uh, and how close would it be to your plane? As a user experience, it should provide as if they are sitting in a car and nothing much has changed to them. <laughs> However... Uh, That's a very good point that you made. <laughs> yeah, and uh, when it comes to the logistics part of it, it should be able to operate with very less noise because we do not want to disturb mm. other people. Right. And in doing so, I see them to be electric looking at the direction we are going into. Being from controls background, I can certainly see the controls aspect. So something like this. So when do we switch from here to here? Mm. That is uh, one challenge. Mm. Right? What are the criteria to determine that? Mm. Yeah, I have been trained as a product designer. So I like to think of things in a holistic sense. Right. Right. From the engineering aspect of it to the service aspect of it, everything has to work out. And so it is not necessarily aerospace then for you? No, it is not. It's just a design problem. So, uh, how do you think everybody can chip into this development? Start with the mechanical aspects of it. The strength has to be ensured. We have to make sure if in case of the crash, how do we protect the chassis or right, protect the occupants? And also in the planning, how do we uh, ensure we are reaching and taking the path? Of course, there are electrical challenges, chemistry challenges. I'm Bharat, I'm uh, also a faculty here, a student professor uh, at the Aerospace Engineering. I work uh, primarily on um, rotorcraft, aerodynamics and aircraft design. So this topic of flying taxis is uh, very right. exciting. What has been your ideas on the emerging scenario on flying taxis? When you think flying taxis, it almost seems like a natural evolution of transportation. It is also a good time for this sort of technology to come in because I think the market is right and there are also other uh, technologies that sort of assist it. For instance, motor technologies, battery technologies are sort of coming in and there's still a ways to go but I think we're definitely at a place where you can get these concepts, uh, put them together and maybe have a prototype. So Yeah, which is what we are trying to do. <laughs> yeah, <Right. so>. absolutely. <laughs> Exciting and probably the very first in India at least. Uh, I think there are a few other uh, competitors but uh, we think that we will be the first to take off okay yeah. and and maybe take off much sooner than others the thing with the air taxi is uh, along with the vehicle design we also have to now worry about ground infrastructure because we're looking at an op systems operation correct. absolutely and you want to be able to take off and land anywhere correct 
of course there's the issue of let's say if i want to charge can i charge everywhere and that probably comes back into how you design these vehicles yeah do these multiple hops and come yeah. back you, you need to come back to certain locations correct uh otherwise you're sort of stuck in you need to tow taxi i suppose <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not so easy <laughs> yeah, no, <it's> not, <laughs> not for airplanes at least when you're trying to design a vehicle from scratch and we're not really sure which configuration to pick one of the difficulties is in finding the weights of these components i mean right. it, how heavy is the rotor how heavy is the airframe how heavy is the engine or the batteries uh surfaces etc when we're looking at older uh or conventional hel helicopters and airplanes we have a plethora of data yeah. like we've been building this as a community for over 100 years now and so we always we know how they skip roughly but we don't have that much data uh and arguably very little in the public domain right so to be able to actually figure out how much would this weigh is is a challenge it almost seems like some sort of a parallel to driverless cars right so is there a psychological component in that oh yeah that's, that's an interesting question so i don't know why you brought that up because certification agencies are going through is to first put human pilots uh, in their seats okay uh, as opposed to actually having autonomous flights but it turns out that interestingly uh, autonomous flights are easier than driverless cars the only thing is like if you happen to have an obstacle lo and behold that's actually going to be a lot more catastrophic right that's the only thing that we have to be worrying about but otherwise you hardly get any obstacles up in the air when compared to on the ground right that said then the question is psychological right so would people be happy getting into a plane that uh, does not have a human pilot so what i am thinking is that we need to essentially have a lot of natural language processing that the plane uh, is endowed with so the plane actually starts talking to the passengers okay. and making them feel comfortable about uh, the flight so the flying experience has to be such that they don't really get the the design is about flying but instead they end up, end up enjoying the flight you know when we when we look at flying taxis and we look at the aerospace industry as a whole it's perhaps good to also look at what we're doing as a department uh, mm -hmm. at IIT Madras yeah of course there's the academic side where we're sort of pushing the envelope on things and trying to understand uh, technologies there's also the other aspect where there's a lot more encouragement etc to come up with products and test it out and put it into flying vehicles yeah there's also the research part which uh, immensely boosts uh, entrepreneurs to actually take these to the next stage